it's Katie and this is my life with vets. I wanted to share an update with you uh, about my day yesterday. So I had another TIA yesterday and I'm doing okay. I'm back at home now. Um, but we're calling it a low flow TIA. So I'm going to tell you about my morning and then tell you about what the doctor said. So I woke up very early. I went out to the kitchen to start making coffee. Nothing unusual there. Um, and then I started all of a sudden feeling kind of like room spinning, wobbly, unable to balance. And I realized that my whole right side of my face was numb and that the right side of my body was going numb. It didn't feel very stable. I managed to sit down before I fell over and reached up and turned off the hot water for the coffee, which was sad. But I started seeing spots, uh, like really bright spots everywhere, all over my vision, kind of starting with the right side and pretty much spreading so it was everywhere. Uh, I was able to call 911 easier this time. I have my Apple Watch and I also have my phone, which apparently has a flashlight on right now. I'll turn that off. So with Apple phones, if you hit the this button five times, um, it'll call 911 for you. That's another shortcut if you don't know it about your iPhone. So use that to call 911. I told them how to get into the house. They didn't relay that information to the fire department, so when they got there, I did do another butt scoot over <laughs> to the front door to let them in. Um, but by the time that they arrived, I had started having feeling back in my limb. I just felt kind of unstable, and I was just still seeing spots. So they took me to the ER because they know my history. They know who I am. The guy recognized me immediately and got a CT and a CTA with contrast and no new dissections, which is a relief, and no brain bleed, which was obviously a relief. So I asked the doctor about low flow TIAs. And when I, you know, when I did see the neurologist, I asked him about that because the last one was very similar. If you remember, I got up early in the morning, went to go get some water from the kitchen, and within a few minutes I was on the ground having a TIA. So we're diagnosing both of these as low flow TIAs now, is what he said. He thinks they are both low flow TIAs, which results from your blood pressure not stabilizing um, fast enough when you first get up. So if you're laying down normally, like you when you sleep, you know, your blood's kind of going where it's supposed to go. And then you get up in the morning, everybody's blood, he said, pools at the bottom of their feet. And then their body corrects for that. And my body isn't correcting it fast enough. It's taking longer to do that, and it's causing TIAs where my brain isn't getting enough blood. And he said part of that could be the pseudoaneurysm that I have in my internal carotid artery on my left side. He said that could be also hindering things that are already struggling because it provides this other route for the blood to go through before it finishes populating what needs to be populated in your brain which I thought that was pretty interesting. So, um, low flow TIA. And the recommendation was to spend more time in the morning before I get out of bed. So, you know, get up in the morning and then sit up for five minutes by the side of the bed before I actually start moving for the day, which is going to be a struggle for me because I'm kind of like a get up and go kind of person. Um, so I'm going to start leaving things by my nightstand so that when I get up I have something to look at or do for those five minutes. This morning I got up and I set a timer on my phone for five minutes. He also said that I could try compression stockings or compression leggings and he said that like nobody likes those and he doesn't really expect me to like that. <laughs> so we'll see if I try that. Um, he said as a last ditch effort there is medication that can raise my blood pressure but obviously with my... With my VEDs, we need to keep my blood pressure low. So it would be risky, risky business to start taking medication to raise my blood pressure. So as of right now, that's what I know. And hopefully these recommendations help me not have this again because it's, it's not a pleasant experience having a TIA. It's not. It's not pleasant at all. Like your whole one side of your body goes numb and you're just like, is it? And the hard thing is, too, he said that, like, it, even if we know, right, that I'm having these low-flow TIAs, 
I have to go to the ER every time. I have to rule out a dissection or a flea because it could always be that. So I did the right thing by going to the ER. He said if it happens again, I should be going to the ER. That was kind of reassuring that I'm doing the right things. Um, and it's kind of reassuring that he doesn't think it's a hemiplegic migraine because that is a whole nother scary beast that I, I really don't want. I don't want that. <laughs> don't want that at all. So this morning I got up, took my time, and it was so far so good. So keeping my fingers crossed it doesn't happen again. Keeping my fingers crossed that these recommendations work and I'm following up with my primary. Anyway, uh, that's my update, and I hope you guys have a good day.